Hi, you're here to discuss the results of your home sleep apnea test. While I'm reading and scoring your sleep study, I want to give you some important information about obstructive sleep apnea, what it is, why it ha happens, and how it is measured, and a couple of comments about treatment. After I finish reading your study, we will review your results, and we will talk about some treatment options. The problem with sleep apnea is that your airway closes off during sleep. This is shown in the next slide. This is a cross-section view of a person who is lying down. On the left, the person is awake. On the right, the person is asleep. Let me point out some things so that you understand what you're seeing. Here is the nose and the nasal passages. You can see a large area where air gets humidified as you are breathing in so your lungs don't dry out. Here's the mouth and the tongue. Bet you didn't realize how big the tongue is. You can't see most of it even when you open your mouth. It's mainly down low in the uh, in the jaw. This area back here is called the pharynx. It is divided into the nasopharynx, uh, which is a little bit to the left of that arrow I just uh, pointed out. This is behind the soft palate. The oropharynx, which is right where the arrow is pointing, is below the soft palate and kind of behind the tongue. And then there's a part, part called the uh, pharynx itself, which is down a little bit lower toward the lungs. When you're awake, your airway is nice and open and you can breathe normally. In sleep apnea, when you're asleep, as you can see in this view, the tongue relaxes back, often pushing on the soft palate and the airway partially or completely obstructs. The result is a thing that we call a breathing event. There are three types of obstructive breathing events or respiratory events. The first one is called an apnea. In an apnea, basically all airflow obstruction stops due to airway, sorry, basically all airflow obstructs due to airway obstruction. On the tracing on the right, there are two measures of airflow. As you can see, right when uh, the dotted line, vertical dotted line is shown and the breathing event starts, airflow virtually stops. It has to be reduced by at least 90% for us to call it an apnea. This line indicates that you're trying to breathe. It's your chest working to uh, breathe, but there is no airflow. This line indicates that your oxygen level is dropping. Another type of breathing event, not quite as severe as an apnea, is a hypopnea. There is a decrease in airflow, but you see that it's not as flat as it was on the previous slide. It's kind of like you're sucking air through a straw. There's airflow, but it's not enough. And the result is that you continue to try to breathe, but not very successfully because your oxygen is dropping. Both in an apnea and a hypopnea, you usually wake up for a few seconds in order to get um, your airway open so that you can start to breathe again. There is a third type of breathing event called a RERA, or a respiratory effort-related arousal. And you can see that on this slide. You see that at the top arrow that there's a decrease in airflow as you are trying to breathe through kind of through that straw that I was talking about before, and there's a little bit of an arousal afterwards. But notice at the bottom arrow, there's no drop in your oxygen level. If you think about it for a minute, you'll realize that we can't call this kind of sleep event on a home sleep apnea test, but you don't need to worry. We can make all the decisions we need to make based on your apneas and hypopneas. Now we sum up all of the apneas and hypopneas that you have over your hours of sleep, and we create a thing called the apnea hypopnea index, or AHI. And this is the number we use to determine the severity of your sleep apnea. We'll talk more about that in the next slide. Now the severity of sleep apnea is determined by the number of events you have per hour and the level to which your oxygen level drops. We think it's normal to have up to five events per hour. It's mild sleep apnea if there are between five and 15 breathing events per hour. It is moderate sleep apnea if there are between 15 and 30 events per hour. And it's severe sleep apnea if there are more than 30 events per hour. In a moment, I'll be able to tell you how many events you had per hour. In regard to your oxygen level, your oxygen level should stay above 90% in your sleep. And I'll report that to you as well in just a minute. Now, as we think about treatment, let me just make a couple of comments. The first question is whether you would ever need to be treated for sleep apnea. And the basic therapeutic rules are that if you have more than 15 events per hour, you need to be treated whether you are sleepy during the day or not. In other words, that's a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, for um, heart disease, uh, heart attack, stroke, heart rhythm problems like atrial fibrillation. So it needs to be treated even if you don't have any symptoms of sleep apnea directly. If you have less than 15 events per hour, 
Treatment will depend on whether you are having daytime sleepiness or other symptoms or conditions related to sleep apnea. We'll review those with you momentarily. And briefly, in terms of treatment options, let me say that once we've decided whether you need to be treated, if your AHI is less than the 25 to 30 range, then you have three treatment options. You could consider weight loss, that's assuming you're significantly overweight, or we could consider a thing called an oral appliance or CPAP. If you have more than 25 to 30 events per hour, CPAP's really your only choice. We're going to talk more about that in just a minute. Thanks for watching this brief review on obstructive sleep apnea. It's going to help you understand your results and your treatment recommendations that I will share with you in just a minute.